Hey guys, welcome to the RC Rundown. I just rebranded the channel. I'm gonna to try to post at least once a week, whether it's something I'm working on or you know, crawling videos, bashing videos, things like that. But this video is specifically, as you'll be able to tell already, uh, for the RC 4 wheel drive Bully 2 and the radio link, the new RC8X, which is awesome. It's sort of like a Futaba kind of layout. Um, and I had a 7PXR. But I wanted something for crawlers, and I wanted something specifically to dual do uh, dual motor on axle setups like the Bully 2. So I just set this up yesterday, and I've had some people reaching out asking how it works. So right off the bat, the first thing you have to do, what I did on my rear motor, is let's pretend this is the lead coming off the rear motor. You have to remove the red wire. That's the positive lead. Because you cannot have the rear motor and the front motor, both with the positive lead plugged into your receiver. You will blow the receiver. It's going to get too much um, voltage. So, and that the reason that is, is I have both of those wired together. So when I plug in one battery, both are powered up. So you only need one to have the red wire. So what I did was I just popped that pin, I folded it back and I put some heat shrink over it. So it's there if I ever want to remove it and put it into another truck. But while it's in this, it's not actually sending any power. It's just the ground and the signal wire. So that's the first thing you have to do to at least one. I don't think it matters whether it's front or rear, but I did it on my rear because that's my slave. My front motor is my primary. So I'm running a small 453 cell battery. As I mentioned, I have my wiring set up here. I'm going to try to get a pointer. Uh, let me do let me get this here. So these wires here, are my rear motor wires. They are spliced in. You can kind of see the heat shrink here. And uh, I, I, my LED lights aren't here yet, but I'm getting LED lights too to give me more light in here, which will be better for the next video. But for now, um, so these are spliced into, you can see this looped red wire here. That's going to my front motor. So I basically remove the battery connector off the rear motor, solder that to the front motor wires, heat shrunk that, and then reattach the one plug. So when I plug the battery in, it's powering both. And I also have a small JST connector that's directly into the battery that's going to power my servo. So that's how I have my wiring set up. Um, I have channel two, which is my throttle, is my front motor. Channel three is my rear motor. And I'll show you how I set that up on the radio. So everything's plugged in. I'm gonna get these here just to prop this up to kind of show everything working. But everything's plugged in. We have the batteries already plugged in. Um, I'm going to turn the radio on. So what we're going to do is just go through some menus here quick. So this is really nice setup. It's all touchscreen. And I have the volume and everything off here so that way you're not listening to it while I explain it. So basically, you can see I have dual ESC here. Hit that. There we go. Dual ESC ratio and then dual ESC. So I have some switches set up for this. So the first thing I do, I go into the menu system and I click on like the four wheels here. That'll give me my mixing and I'm gonna to go to dual ESC mixing. And what you can see is I have mixing on, mix mode on and trim mode on. And when you first turn this on, all those are gonna be off. ESC one, channel two, that's my throttle. So I chose channel two for ESC one. And then I know I plugged in my rear ESC to channel three. So that is channel three. I left both at a hundred percent. And then if you click that top one of one, two of two, so that's pages. So the next page, my dual ESC switch is DT four, which is here. My, what else do I have? Drive rate is DT two. So that's going to allow me to do overdrive. And dual ESC four-wheel drive, that's basically putting it into four-wheel drive again, if I go from dig, is PS1. So that's my button here. So what I'm going to do, that's all I did. I didn't tweak anything else. I, well, I did one other thing. So if I click on the little radio here, and I go to, I believe it was under channel settings? No. But you'll see dual ESC1, dual ESC2. That's automatically done. Um, it is... Trim, trim dial select. So DT2 is my overdrive setup. So what I did is I have it in steps of 25. So when I click this once, you're going to see up top a yellow bar come up and it's going to say plus 25. That's basically making my front ESC and motor work more. 
So because the truck's not on, I'm going to leave that as it is. I'm going to go back out to here. So if I give it full throttle, you'll see channel 2 is 100% and channel 3 is 75%. So I have about 25% overdrive to the front. Now if I click that down, now they're even. If I click it down again, my front, my rear has overdrive and my front is going to be slower. So let's put that neutral. So this is how it would start up normally. And when I hit this button, you'll see it says four wheel drive uh, or dual ESC four wheel drive. So I'm gonna put this down for a second. The battery's plugged in. I'm gonna turn both ESCs on. So both ESCs are on. And I've done nothing here. All I'm doing is gonna give it throttle and you'll see it. I have four wheel. And the rear tire is touching the ground, so. Let me grab another uh, thing to put under here. Give me some lift here. There we go. All right. So throttle. I obviously have forward. I have reverse. Now, if I hit DT4 is my, basically my dig setup. So dig is basically locking one axle and only uh, powering the other. So if I hit DT4 up, that's going to put me in the front. Now I only have front when I give it throttle. If I hit down on that, it's going to be rear. And now my rear is the only thing that has throttle. If I hit my button again on the bottom, the PS1 button, now I have four. And you can see the wheels are spinning the same. Now if I hit up on DT2, that's my basically my overdrive, so 25-ish percent. Now, if I do it, you'll see the, the fronts are spinning more. And that's all proportional. Now, if I hit that again up, I'm at 50%. So now it's really going to give me forward or front rather. And you, you can see how little the rear is spinning. And if I click that down twice, now we're back to normal. So I can be running, driving. Go up into dig, go back into all wheel, front wheel drive. I want to reverse and I only want the rears. I want all four and I want overdrive. So that's how easy the setup was on the radio. So let me shut all this off. So, as far as setup on something like this, I gotta unplug the battery because I don't want it to draw power from the um, servo. So I'm using these, uh, what are they, Tattoo 453 cell like drone batteries. These have um, XT30 connectors. I'm gonna remove this and solder XT60s because I'm only gonna use it on something like this anyways, just to get rid of that extra connector. So this was built box stock. The only thing I changed was I have DravTech shocks. These are the shorts with the soft springs. I have 30 weight oil in those. Um, and then I'm also using, I did install the bully brass um, weights just in the front. I have both in, on each side, two on each side. Um, what else did I do? These are stock tires and wheels. I have Punk's 3D wheels over here. I'm waiting for the tires and um, my, my crawler innovation foams just came in. So those are getting um, built once they, once I have all the parts. But basically I built this box stock. I had to play with the linkages in the rear. And what I did do in the front, the motor's pretty close, is I added Traxxas Jado links uh, or rod ends just in the front on the bottom as well as the top. And the rear is all stock. I'm actually going to add them to the rear up top as well. Because what I want to do is I want to clock the axle. Which basically is going to bring the axle and motor up to give me a little bit more clearance. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to add the rod ends here. And I might actually add the rod ends on the front up here too. To do the same thing on the front. To get a little bit more uh, clearance. But this thing is sick. Um, actually I can show you real quick. I don't have any crawling footage, unfortunately. I literally just finished this late last night. 
and I haven't gotten out yet and it's about 30 degrees. So hopefully we'll have a nice day this week and I can take it out. So I'm going to turn all this back on. For those who don't really ha haven't seen an MOA build, it's pretty cool. I mean, that's as high as it is. I have four fingers. I have pretty big hands. I can go under no problem. But if I put it into dig, you're going to see it's going to sink down. And if I go back into four wheel, it'll stay like that. And I know a lot of guys like brushed setups um, for the controllability and I guess drag brake. But honestly, the Fusion Pros, I have them in a lot of like comp style crawlers. I really like them. I mean, this is me trying to go really slow. And I can even go slower than that. It's very smooth. And one thing I like about too, the FOC systems are they're very linear where I don't have to keep giving it throttle. It's not going to um, like stall, which I like. I don't know if it's going to work, but I'll kind of show you what I mean. I haven't changed my throttle at all. It's the same amount of throttle. Going a little slower. And the rear should do the same thing. I mean, very controlled. And I'm the type of guy, I don't really like rock bouncing with like this type of stuff. I want to go slow. I want to see the suspension work. I want to know what it's going to do. So being able to have that control is huge. I'm very impressed with it. Uh, the build went together really well. The axles are really nice. Um, wiring is pretty clean. My biggest thing was I was concerned that it was going to be a pain in the ass to get all the wiring correct, but it's really not that bad. Everything's zip tied. I do want to zip tie these here um, to this link, but other than that, I mean, it's all pretty, it's done pretty easily. Right, It's a little bit of work to get everything set up, but it's not too bad once you're done. But I hope that helped answer some questions. Um, I'll try to take some B-roll um, either and now put it in to show the the wires. Um, it's just kind of hard because everything's zip tied in already. But basically, you're just taking the two red wires, the positive wires, splicing them in together. And um, oh, you know what? Here's what I'll do. We'll do this. teaching moment here so if this this blue is my front motor and these are this is the battery lead for the front motor and this rear this red Dean's connector is my rear motor I cut this Dean's connector off so we'll just pretend now it's cut and I literally cut maybe a quarter of an inch here with a razor blade and cut it off in between the wire like about that same thing on the red or the black and I stripped the ends, soldered, and I literally just soldered them like that together and heat shrunk it and did the same thing in the rear. So basically, you have this going to your rear motor, those going to your front motor, plug in the battery, and you're powering all of it. Just remember, you have to pull that pin in the JST plug from the mo rear motor because you cannot have both positive wires going into the receiver at once from two two systems, basically. That'd be like putting two trucks. If that's the easier way to think about it for some people, that would be like plugging two speed controls to two separate trucks into one receiver, and you're going to screw something up. So don't do that. But I'm very impressed with this. Um, that's on still. I don't want to mess with that. Shut it off. Really liking the radio. Um, it's got a lot of features I haven't even gone, but there's a lot of mixing options here. Um, different curves you can do. Telemetry, and I'm actually running a six channel receiver. I'm not running the eight channel it came with, but it's all touchscreen. It's very nice. And I think it's at a great price point at $300. I am running the LiPo battery that it comes with. Um, 
but it's supposed to do like FPV as well. And I have some FPV stuff, but I don't really do much of it. So probably not going to do anything with that, but I hope this helped. I will, um, like I said, I'll try to get some B-roll just to kind of show some wiring too, like just some close-up shots of it. This explained it the easiest way. Um, and it'd be really hard for me to take all of it apart to show it again. But uh, if you guys have any questions, let me know. But I'm going to try to, like I said, post once a week now, maybe more than that if I have stuff going on. I do have a really nice Capra build. Um, I will actually grab that quick and kind of give you a teaser, but that's going to be up next. So a little teaser. Punk's 3D stage dive capper four wheel steer build. Um, I just got his skid he just sent me. And that skid, so this is the stock transmission. Um, his kit is really, really nice. Basically, all you pull is your axles, your links, your drive shafts, and your um, transmission. So basically, the drivetrain um, and shocks if you want. But it all goes on to his uh, chassis kit, the stage dive. Very self-explanatory, very easy to do. And what I did, he makes two skids, one for the stock trans and one for the deluxe portal trans. And this thing is ridiculously small. I mean, this is insane. It's way smaller than what's in there. It's going to lower my CG. It's going to give me a little bit of weight back. Uh, and that's kind of why I did it. This is already, this is broken. I have the stock plastic uh, servo mounts. And the issue is the rear broke the other day. So it still worked, but it's kind of flopping around. And I have to order metal ones to put them on. But this is a really nice rig. I have a bunch of footage of that. I'll post up soon for you guys. But uh, hey, I hope you guys enjoyed everything. Like, subscribe. Any questions you guys have, let me know. And uh, I'll get some more stuff up for you guys. Thanks.